morning and welcome to Tel Aviv. I'm riding a bike around what resembles Regent's Park. Right, before we started that, you said watch out for foxes, yeah. goose, yeah. and uh, jackals. Jackals. Yeah. What did I say? What's a jackal? <laughs> <laughs> Usually you see them uh, chasing the goose and stuff like that. Oh, right? okay, so they're and going then they packs. run into our wheels, like, <laughs> three in a row. <laughs> we had a crash last week. Did you? The, no, not myself. We had uh, one of our trains. Asaf and I were pulling and uh, our fourth wheel crashed Jesus. because of a jackal. Like, I'm glad you tell me that wheels. now and not before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like how um, cycling culture is the same in every country. Yeah, always coffee. R ride kind of hard and then go, oh, let's go for a coffee instead. Yeah. The kit, what is it? This is the, our Rosetta kit. Yeah. It's because coffee. It's because coffee. See like the, the drawing they do on your coffee? The... Oh, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was the um, name of the park we went to this morning? Most people. Bird head. Uh, bird's head. Uh, bird head. If you look, if you look up from the geographical view, like from a, a satellite bird's picture of of the Rossipor from like 50 years ago, it, it really looks like a bird's head. Yeah. And, oh, really? Yeah. It still looks. <laughs> it still looks. And, 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 it still looks. Every morning, there's laps like that going on. Yeah, Everybody turns every up. Every morning, uh, roadies come there, fix gear guys. People that don't know how to ride come there. They were supposed laps. to be very busy, but <laughs> let me around the corners. <laughs> you see, it looks like a bird's hat. I need a Jaden to say I'm not passionate to get my lazy ass up. I'm not having it. They say the reason of the stars. I'm not What's with all the electric bikes? Ah, it's terrible. like dirty pacing everywhere. I wish, they, I wish there was the gun law like in the US here where I can shoot them. <laughs> I don't know if you can say that on the internet. Do you ever just sit behind the dernies? Or behind the electric bikes? That's no, good training, right? Each time I see one, I just, I just speed and sprint with them and cut them off. <laughs> Teach them a lesson to pedal in life. Uh, yeah, good, good philosophy there, man. Good philosophy. I don't, I don't like to ride on the on this, uh, bike lane. Really? Because uh, there's so many electric bikes everywhere. Catch you in a bit, man. It'll be fun. Thanks for the ride. Don't I'll eat, see you in a few don't eat anything. I'm gonna eat uh, probably at the shuk Ooh. at the market, like some very authentic things, some awesome food. Some hummus. All right, I'm just uh, back out on the bike. Gonna meet Kafir and uh, swap my bike for a Brompton. See some of the city. We need a strong man. Eh? Strong man spring. Oh man, is that your gear? <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. What do you think of my new steed, man? Man, it's awesome. It's awesome. It looks very British. Yeah, right? that's a fair swap. Yeah, I'll, well, just get, I'll keep this one. <laughs> Give the Brompton. It's faster than yours, I think. Do you reckon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. Skinny, slick tires. You upped. You got upgraded. <laughs> we call it the um, Culture Center, which is a big auditorium. The symphonic, uh, the Philharmonic plays there. Here you got like all the big shows, all the big theater, uh, how do you say, plays. And three massive circles. Yeah, I don't know why. Why not? But they always dress them up with crazy things. Like in Purim, you know, the Israeli Halloween. Yeah. So they'll just like dress them up with like emojis last year. <laughs> or a couple of years ago, it was ice cream, like three ice cream cones. I bet the original artist loved it. Yeah, loves he's that. like yeah, thrilled yeah. about it now. <laughs> First building in Tel Aviv ever. Ever. First building in Tel Aviv. You go inside and you can see actually how Tel Aviv was all a desert. And uh, the first founders of Tel Aviv, they, they uh, uh, how do you say, they divided the land between yeah. themselves according to seashells. They had a lottery pick and if you had uh, the bigger seashell, you had more land. You got more land. Uh, and you have the pictures here of the, it's called the seashell lottery. Um, this building is now owned by this real estate uh, development firm, but the lobby is public area. It's like a small museum. So the best that's uh, hummus uh, hakamel, very good hummus. Um, it used to be a synagogue. That's why when you go in, you see like all those, you know, like you can you can sense it was a synagogue because you see the, how the places where you sit down are arranged, um, the lights, the, the the ceiling, everything. You can see by the stool, you see the old synagogues. 
Lechaim. Lechaim. That's Israeli cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers, bro. I'm being, I'm being offered sweets by a stranger. Yeah, that's how you eat it here. Yeah, okay. Cool. No, don't film this. Yeah, no, ca no, com film no this comment. Film. No comment. What just happened? No comment. What just happened? <laughs> the dog just, just peed on his wheel. He no peed on your no, wheel, man. He no peed comment. On wheel. You're gonna have to check. You're gonna have to get a new wheel. A new bike. A new bike, mate. New bike. Ah, uh, it's a new. It's a. It's, it's a good reason. Don't touch it. <laughs> לא נורא, זה מתקלה! אנשים, אין לה זוהר, אין. השאלה היא אם אתה יודע לפגוע באנשים. עד אז תביאו מקום. He just wants our money. He just wants our money. In the pond, in the water. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. If he's ready, we, we came all the way over here. And he's all the way, nothing. We fought with people in the market. Uh, people hate Italians now. <laughs> because of what? you were doing an Italian accent. Yeah, <laughs> okay, it's your yeah, fault. Italian yeah, accent. Yeah. And now he's just on the phone. Yeah, like, he came here to visit him. Like an asshole. He doesn't I'm, even care. I'm grateful. The things we, we, we sacrificed for him. So to explain the uh, reason why I'm here slightly clearer, I'm actually in Israel to uh, do some work with the Israeli Cycling Academy. And today, they have a testing day. You're going to do some, do some treadmill? Yeah, but on my, I'm going to do a... Headstand first. Yeah, we well can do it. It's got a harness there to help you. I think it's gonna be more professional than that guy in the beer bazaar. Yeah, well, everything was more professional than everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rotem, welcome to the videos. Nice to meet you. Nice uh, to meet you're the man behind the testing today uh, with the Israeli cycling. Uh, what tests are you doing? Uh, so today we're doing two tests. Uh, first, we're starting with body composition. We want to figure out the body composition of the cyclists, see where they're sitting uh, in late December, just before they're starting their season. We want to see where they're mostly their body fat. Uh, they're also the lean mass, meaning muscle mass mostly, and where their weight is right now. Um, and then the second part of the test, which is the mo more kind of interesting, is actually doing the... Uh, the <laughs> you so impressed. Yeah. <laughs> Are you looking forward to the more interesting part yeah, of the test? Yeah, I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, that's the part that uh, all the riders really love, uh, because we really get to push them really hard. Uh, it's what's called a lactate threshold and metabolic profile. Uh, so we start from really low intensity, 2 watts per kilo, and then we increase the intensity uh, by half a watt per kilo and pretty much take them to failure until they can go no longer and by putting a mask on them what's called a metabolic uh, gas analysis we can figure out the fat and carb utilization the fat and carb oxidation levels their vo2 which is their oxygen consumption and also carbon uh, dioxide production as well uh, during the test as well we're going to measure for lactate from their earlobe uh, we're going to pretty much push the athlete to their limit and that's it. So you're going to be prodded and poked? Yeah, you're going to be dead in the end. <laughs> so how are the uh, results of these tests going to affect what sort of training these riders get given in the season? Um, well, we're not affecting their training. What we're trying to do is just give good recommendation uh, to their coaches and also tailor the training we do on a, on a team basis, on the, on the weekly team training, tailor it to their needs. So by understanding their metabolism and by understanding their physiology, we're able to really fine tune their personal, uh, their personal training zones, okay? And understand what's more and less important to train on in terms of, uh, for an example, energy systems or intensity, what's more important to train for them personally and as a team at different stages of the season. Right now, we're at the end of December, where the first, r the first racing block is coming up uh, in March. Then we still have some solid block of time to really work on some what's called uh, the base period, the base training block. So there is no much need to focus on too high of intensity too early in the season. Perhaps focus on more of the lower intensities so that way we can, for example, alter 
their metabolism to be a little bit more fat efficient so they learn to burn more fat while they're riding uh, intensive. Fantastic. Get going then. Yeah. Uh, did pretty well. As I've mentioned before, the test usually takes about 40 minutes or so. Uh, most, most of the cycling academy development riders, they reach anywhere between uh, maybe 5 and 6 watts per kilo at the peak of the, this testing protocol. Uh, now he's on the second stage, which is 2.5 watts per kilo, which for his weight is about 175 watts. So it's still just a good warm up, you know, so uh, the first I'd say maybe third or even half of the test is just gradually increasing so it feels like a warm up for the riders as well. Sure. And uh, cheeky question, what is the highest watts per kilo you've ever seen a rider have for lactate threshold? Um, for lactate, threshold, huge. for lactate threshold probably anywhere between six and six and a half watts per kilo, which is really high. That's really high. Yes. Uh -huh. It wasn't you. It wasn't me. <laughs> You've got a chance. We had that good warm up this morning. Yeah, but we have to bring up the bike. All right, let's go and get it. We can. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> we are on a Thank you. He didn't want to do the test. Yeah, we all have time. I mean, we have to bring the bike to the shop. We call it the pussy. The pussy test? The pussy. I am. You are. I am. Yeah. That's why I didn't uh, do tattoo today. With the, with the little dress under the. Yeah. There's a bit. Yeah. Yeah, so what we're doing now is we're having sabik. Sabih is one of the most common street food in Israel after falafel and shawarma. Uh, basically, it has uh, salad, eggplants, um, eggs, and all the different salads and spices you want and sauces. And here you have, uh, if you can, this guy also make it with cheese inside, with like uh, salty cheese, like feta. Really good. I, I personally like to put some amba inside. Amba is uh, it's kind of like a sauce made from mangoes. See that yellow thing? Yeah. Right, back at the hotel. I've got 220k to ride tomorrow. I'm gonna get some sleep. See you in the morning. <laughs>